We're starting a new program right now for Armstrong. We've been doing My Dog and Me, and now instead of doing the different health conditions that occur with dogs, what we're going to try and do is introduce the general public to the different breeds of dogs that are available. I'm not even sure how many different breeds there are, but I know there's an awful lot of them, and we're going to continue to do this for quite a while. Our hope is to do three breeds at a time, and the first one we're going to do is one of the most popular little breeds that people have, and it's known as the Cavalier King Charles. And I have with me today Artis Walsh, who happens to be the owner of not only Murphy, but uh, what, one other? One other. One other cabbie. So this is Artis, and she's going to talk to you all about um, the Cavalier King Charles. And the other person that's helping, who's going to step over here, is Robin Peterson, my sidekick for the therapy dogs. And Robin also, besides helping with me with this today, is also involved, if you don't already know this, with Red Ball Dog Academy. It's a dog training program that is in the Conneaut Lake area, although she has customers from all over. All over. And we're going to also be telling you a little bit about the training, so of course she can make some comments about that. So we're going to start by talking about um, Murphy. Murphy. I can always think of Murphy. There, we've got three, the reason I say that there are three Cavaliers that are in our group, or that work around with us, and that's why we wanted to start with this one. So, Robin, it's yours. Okay. <laughs> Murphy's tail is helping with all of Artis's notes, so we're just going to put them here in a pile and you can Perfect. go through them, okay? All right. All right, Artis, so how long have you had Cavaliers? Um, I've had Cavaliers for 13 years, um, and um, I um, started out with um, two who were um, basically rescues, mm -hmm. and um, I absolutely fell in love with the breed. And um, so this is our this was our first puppy, um, and he was a challenge. He was a challenge. All puppies are challenged. I always remember God makes puppies cute so we don't kill them. Yes. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about the breed and what drew you to the breed. Um, I before I had Cavaliers, I had a Cocker Spaniel. So um, I was drawn to the Spaniel breed um, initially. And a friend of mine had Cavaliers, and when my copper was aging, um, she um, contacted me and said um, she knew of a Cavalier that was um, up for adoption, and she thought I should go take a look. Um, and when you go take a look, you take home. Um, he, <laughs> Always. He I won. Know, why would that happen? I don't know. Um, just one look, and uh, your heart melted. <clears throat> they have um, just such an incredible temperament. Um, they're just so loving and devoted. It's just. Let's talk a little bit about the different colors they come in, because this is my favorite. I'm a very, very strong okay. believer in the tri-color. What are the other colors that Cavaliers come in? Um, well, we'll start with the tri first, because um, according to AKC standards, there's um, some specifics about where the coloring has to be. Mm -hmm. They um, This is a tri, obviously, because he's got all three colors. Um, and it's he's mostly black and white. The brown um, has to be specific to over the eyes, on the side of his face, underneath his ears, and under his tail. Um, and anywhere else, um, he wouldn't make it into the show ring. Okay. Um, the um, second um, color is a Blenheim, and it is just the brown and white. The Blenheim is probably the most popular color. You see more of those than you do any of the other colors. So that's predominantly white or predominantly right. brown? It's, it's white with brown. With the brown. Okay. And um, the brown varies. Again, according to AKC standards, the brown has to be all the way around the eyes, the ears, and then wherever else it happens to fall. Um, now, I do have a Blenheim at home, and he is probably 70% white. Um, he's very white with small patches. My sister has um, two Blenheims, and they are probably 75% brown. Mm -hmm. So it varies. The, um, the next is the black and tan, and they are all black, again with the brown, and the brown is exactly as it would be on the tribe, the same places. And then finally, the last one is the ruby. Um, the ruby is the total brown. It, it tends to be a little more reddish mm -hmm. than what this is, but they can have no other color on them at oh, all. Oh, not at all? None at all. Okay. Um, just total red. Everyone I've ever talked to who owns a ruby, any ruby that I have ever encountered, has a little bit of a tube. 
Um, I don't know why. Maybe that red hair thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but um, they're lovable just as the others are. But they do. They are a little bit different. So if you're looking at that, that's something you'd really want to consider and look at carefully. Is the, the red? People that know me always are one of my other favorite breeds that I'm never going to own is a Bernice Mountain Dog. And I always say, if I can't have a large Bernice Mountain Dog, I'm going to get a tri-colored Cavalier because it has almost the same markings. Yes. And I like that. And the other thing we're not talking, we need to talk about too, there's one other thing that all Cavaliers have. They're all born with one thing. They have a motor in their backside. Yeah. The, the tail tails. never yeah, stops. stops wagging. I tell people that he has a heart string attached to his tail, and every time his heart beats, his tail wags. Um, but that is characteristic. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at the AKC standards, one of the things that they say when they um, walk the carpet in the ring is that tail needs to just Constant. have a flow to it. Mm -hmm. um, and indeed, his does. Okay, uh, what other variations? Anything else we need to know about them? Just about the colors and that, we're good on that. Yep, we got colors. We're How about color. heights and weight? What is... Um, they are um, about um, 12 to 13 inches high at the highest point of their shoulder um, and weight 12 to 18 pounds. Weight is crucial with the Cavalier because of some of the health issues. We'll talk about that, I think, in a little bit. Um, but keeping their weight in control is really important. And he likes to eat. He is very food driven. Tremendously. Very, very food driven, yes. So um, keeping his weight in control is a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, you can't leave anything in sight, dog food wise, or he'll eat it. Weight is important for all dogs. All dogs need to um, really, really watch their waistline. Yes. Well, you've you've waistline watched his yeah. weight a lot because he's not heavy at all. No, As a matter of fact, the other two cavaliers so that are sometimes around us are basically the same. Yes. Height from the same weight too, so that's yeah. good. He, he has lost a few pounds. He he was really good. yeah he happen? was over twenty pounds, um, and I immediately cut back and put him on a diet. Okay. Um, yeah. A really good way to check your dog's weight is to just put your thumbs on their spine, take your fingers, and very gently go like this on their rib cage. You should be able to easily feel ribs. If you can't feel ribs and you have to push, your dog is. Um, too heavy. If your fingers get caught in the ribs and bump over the ribs, your dog is too thin. But that's an easy way to tell, and you can very easily feel his ribs. You don't need an x-ray machine at all to know that they're in there. So he, he is very nice, very, very nice shape. So where did the Cavalier King Charles come from? Originally, um, they were bred in England. They go back to the 1600s in England. And um, they were originally bred to be um, companions of the royalty. And um, King Charles II um, was instrumental in the breed, thus um, the name King Charles. Um, in the United States, um, they've just become popular, I think, more in the last 20 years um, or so. They are very much an urban dog. When you go into um, cities, you'll find lots of cavaliers. He's in love with Sue. He is. I think that. So, in their popularity, according to AKC, they are um, ranked 19th out of 194 breeds in popularity. The Cavalier um, King Charles are. They are um, a member of the toy group. However, you have to remember that they are a spaniel. So, that does mean that they have um, sporting or hunting dog in them. So I imagine when he goes outside, his nose hits the ground and he likes to track. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So um, knowing that and having that in mind, if you have a Cavalier or you have a um, rescue or a mixed breed that has Cavalier in it, um, you would want to watch and not just open the door and let your dog out because if they get on a scent of a squirrel or a chipmunk or something, they're going to go. Absolutely. They are totally fearless. Um, and as devoted and loyal as they, as devoted and loyal oh as they God. are, if they find something of interest, they're gone. They're gone. Um, oh, 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 oh. He, he escaped the back door, out the back door, um, and by the time I was out the door, he was off the deck through the yard and two doors down. Um, the neighbor had his garage door open and had just walked in his door. By the time I got there, he was in the house playing with his dog. 
Um, <laughs> he just, they just go. Yes. Um, as devoted and loyal as they are. They're still um, hunting. They are still <laughs> hunting and they are still absolutely fearless. Yes. Fearless. Yes. Um, so off leash is, is never thing? a right. good idea for right. a cavalier. Right, right. That's very <laughs> important to know. All right, so let's talk about... Um, We've talked about his personality. Uh, we've talked about their breed standard. Let's talk about some of the health issues that this breed has. As with all breeds, there are definitely health issues. Um, one of the um, one of the big ones is heart issues. Mm -hmm. um, so, as I said before, keeping the weight down is really important um, and exercise. The beauty of this breed is they are good with lots of exercise or minimal exercise. Um, they'll go as long as you go, but um, if you want to be a couch potato, they're perfectly fine to cu cuddle up with you, um, but keeping the weight down helps that. Mm -hmm. I read that 50% of Cavaliers have been diagnosed with a heart murmur by the age of four. Wow. Um, and I had, um, the Cavalier that we lost in, in November had a heart murmur, and he was um, diagnosed probably about seven years before he died. Um, it did not at all create an issue. Um, fortunately, so far, the other two, we've had no issues with that. Um, another big one is teeth. Um, because they have that short little nose and all those teeth crammed in there, believe it or not, they have as many teeth as a German Shepherd, mm -hmm. and they're all just crammed in there. So um, teeth is a big issue, like regular dental um, is extremely important mm -hmm. for them. Um, teeth, a lot of people don't realize this, but um, as a trainer, I tell all of my students, teach your puppies to let you brush their teeth. You will save yourself a ton of money if you can brush your, your puppy's teeth. Um, dentals are hugely important. If your puppy um, or your dog develops tartar on their teeth, it can lead to heart issues. Um, it can lead to infections that can lead to heart issues and, and other health concerns. It's not just teeth related. Um, they can end up having to have tons of extractions, which leads to digestive issues, which um, that bacteria can get then get in the bloodstream, which then leads to other things. So teeth are really, really important. And he has important. had his share of extractions. Yeah, yeah it's He's really, had you. really yeah. I I'm a golden. Um, the Goldens are my heart breed, and you all know that, and that's what I own, and that's what I've always had. So I had to do my research on the, on the cavies before helping do this today. I was um, a little bit surprised that hip dysplasia is something in a cavalier, in because a dog, in a small dog, because we are all programmed to know medium to large dogs automatically hips and elbows um, need to be screened. But it came up in the Cavalier. Yes. yes so yes. I and I just saw him laying like a frog. So I know he his always, hips are he fine. Always, yeah. He yeah. always lays like that. Yeah. Um, knees is another issue mm -hmm. with the Cavalier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, and um, there's also another condition. I call it um, neck scratchers mm -hmm. disease. You have a yes. The a, the a official name is syringomyelia. Um, wow. I had to look up the pronunciation of that one, and I still might not have gotten it quite right, but that's what it is. Um, it is um, fluid-filled um, cavities that develop up here within the spinal cord next to the brain. And, it's, get. and it's generally caused because the brain is tipped, mm -hmm. and it doesn't allow the... Um, fluid to um, flow free, freely. Um, actually, my Blenheim Cavalier has um, a neck scratchers disease. Yeah, that works um, better. <laughs> and he, it's easier, it's easier to say. Um, um, he's 12. We've had no issues with it. Um, but you'll see him. He'll, he, his head has a tilt when he walks. Mm -hmm. um, and when you take him for a walk, he'll walk a few steps, and then he'll stop and scratch his wow. neck. Um, it can be serious. Um, we've had no issues with it, but um, knock on wood. Yeah, when I was reading about it, they say it shows up in puppies as young as six months old. Yeah. So they are working to, breeders are working to make sure that they, um, they must, I could not find a screening for it, but I'm sure it's out there. Um, and, and my research was minimal. I didn't do hours and hours, and I'm, I'm sure it's out there, but um, they're working to screen them so that they don't breed. Um, it's a recessive, and they're they're trying to make sure that they don't breed um, to that. 
Um, so the screenings that I found were um, hips, knees, which is patella, um, heart, and eyes. Did I miss any that you know of? Um, I think those and the teeth. We and talked the about yeah. the teeth. That's well, a, yeah, that's teeth are to watch. One. But if you were going to purchase um, a Cavalier and you saw Cavaliers advertised in the newspaper, Cavalier King Charles puppies, you would want to call that person and ask them if they did those health clearances. Did they do um, take their, their um, female and the male that they're breeding to? Have they had their eyes cleared? Have they had their heart cleared? Have they had their hips and their knees done? Um, and that's all done through certified um, veterinarians in those fields. And you would want to see those clearances and make sure that they were done. That's a responsible breeder. That is a breeder who has worked to make sure that when they breed puppies, they're breeding as healthy of puppies as possible. Um, none of us are God and none of us can guarantee health, but we can sure do our best um, to put as healthy of puppies out there as possible um, by doing those clearances. Question, uh, something else. What about grooming? What's it take to groom him? Um, if, if he's going to walk the red carpet, yes. you cannot put scissors to them. No. You are not allowed no. to cut them at all. Um, Seriously. This right? is it's their serious. trademark. Yes. This would drive me as a golden person me too. crazy. I, I could that. not do this, but this is their trademark, as is their, their ears. ears. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So um, And all these feathers and all that are uh, Yes, like that. absolutely. Right. You cannot you cannot put if you put a pair of scissors to them, they're done. You can't take them in well, the ring. Wait a minute. Now if, will this fur keep getting longer and longer? Yes, now? it will. Well then um, what, what do you do? Um it, you just brush. Right. And, yes, okay. and with brushing, you'll get the undercoat and oh, okay. you know, gotcha. it will come out. Um, most people who have a Cavalier just as a pet and don't show them, um, many people will keep their feet trimmed. Mm -hmm. um, they call them slippers. Mm -hmm. I call them Grinch feet. Grinch feet. Um, and, and to me, this is a trademark and it I would never right. ever cut them. That's our conversation um, all the time. We have yes. it all the time. Yes. Um, it, and their ears um, are also supposed to have a lot of that feathering. Mm -hmm. The feathering on the legs, um, the neck, the ears, um, the feet, and There's especially the tail. That tail going. Um, so and we talked about the tail. Look, I don't think it's ever it stopped. Stop. Yes. The so, whole entire time. So what are some of Murphy's favorite things to do? Um, Murphy, Murphy just loves to be wherever you are, wherever anybody is. They're very, very people-oriented. Um, they just love people. They just want to be wherever you are. Um, I never have to worry about where my dogs are in the house because wherever I am, that's where they are. Um, they just want, they always want to be in sight of where you are. And if I make 50 trips up and down the steps a day, so do they. Both of them will just um, come up. They're excellent with children, but they're equally as good as a companion for a senior or anyone in between. They're great family dogs. Um, one of the things that I think is really important to know, they are not, um, they suffer from stress anxiety and separation anxiety, so they're not a good dog to have if there is no one home all day long. Um, they need to have someone there. I mean, you can certainly go and leave them for periods of time, but you don't want to um, leave them um, all day, eight or nine hours a day without having someone there. Um, people say that they do better with a companion dog, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a Cavalier. Caval Cavaliers get along with every breed. It doesn't seem to matter, big, little, mm -hmm. anything in between. Um, but leaving them alone is not a not a good thing. And finally, he's also a therapy dog. He is a therapy dog. And a very good one. <clears throat> one of our best. And what does he have a problem with? What do we call him? Um, he's the licker. He's the licker. <laughs> um, he can't stop licking. Um, we, we, we joke about that all the time. And, and I have tried everything. Um, I, it's just yeah. embedded in him. And it's, it's not, it's not going to stop. Okay, uh, anything we need to add? I think we're good. No, I think we're good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, not, not you, artist. Thank you, Murphy, for coming. Oh, because thank we do, you. We do, 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 do. He's Murphy. a good boy. Absolutely. He's a good boy. And uh, we're going to go on to our second breed after a brief pause. And uh, again, this is a Cavalier King Charles, and his name is Murphy.
We're now starting with our second breed for today, and our breed today is called a Bedlington Terrier. And this is Bailey, and Bailey's mother is Lynn Cullen, and you're from Meadville, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And the other person, of course, who's helping me today with finding out a lot of things about these different breeds is Robin Peterson. She happens to be, as I said before, the trainer for Red Wall Dog Academy, and she's going to be assisting us as far as the interview of Lynn and Bailey. And we're going to start by telling you all about Bailey and something about what these Bedlington Terriers do. Robin, it's in your hands. It's in my hands? I, well, Bailey can always be in my hands. He's my speed partner, too. Yes. All right, Lynn, so I know um, when you came to school with Bailey, one of my first questions I asked you, because this is Lynn's very first dog. Lynn has never had a dog before. And when she called the school and said, um, I want to come, I have a Bedlington Terrier, I, I didn't even know what that was. So I had to look him up. I had to look up what a Bedlington Terrier was. Wait, stop. Why did you do this? Why that's did you pick that's this? what I asked her. Yes. That's where I was going. What made you pick a Bedlington Terrier? Well, he's um, hypoallergenic. Yes. Okay. He's Good. pretty. He is. He's pretty. Uh, they're very mild mannered. Yes, he is. Although they are good watchdogs. Yes. Yes. I found that an interesting mix. That it, when I went to the AKC site um, to look up some more facts. Okay, looking that way. To look up some more facts on Bailey, um, they said that they are um, alert watchdogs, versatile athletes. And cuddly TV companions. Yes, all, of all that. wrapped into one. Yeah, it's kind of unusual. Yes, yes, very much so. And he is very much a watchdog. Um, we have found in class when Bailey comes to class, if he's the first one in the door, he will bark at every dog who comes through the door after him. But if he's the last one to arrive at class, he just comes he's in fine. the door and he's quiet. Yeah. But if he is the first one there, he has to alert me that everybody else is after him and I don't know whether he's like Sue and thinks that if you're on time to class that you're late <laughs> and you must be at least 20 minutes early to any function that you are going to maybe I think maybe that's what he thinks all right so let's talk a little bit about the breed standard of the Bedlington Terrier well Bedlingtons are usually about um, male and female about 16 inches at the uh, shoulder mm-hmm Bailey is about 18 and a half inches. You're a little bit bigger, aren't you? Yes. That's and uh, Bedlingtons usually weigh between 22 and 26 pounds. Okay. Bailey weighs 30 pounds. <laughs> oh, Bailey. That's a little much. Um, <coughs> life expectancy? Um, 12 to 15 years. Oh, that's really nice. Normally for a Bedlington. That's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what... Why were the Bedlington Terriers created? What was their job? Well, originally, Bedlingtons um, traveled around England with the ROM, the gypsies. Um, and then some of the uh, royal uh, people in England, northern England, realized that they were good ratters. Mm -hmm. um, some of them were interbred with um, whippets. Mm -hmm. You can see that in his structure. Yeah. You, you can see the whippet in him. There mm -hmm. also might be some uh, carry blue ter uh, terrier, mm -hmm. uh, a soft Wheaton terrier, mm -hmm. and a dandy Dinmont mm -hmm. somewhere in his history. And we refer them as lamb because if they can get his face towards the camera so they can really <laughs> see how it looks here. This is, a this is so different. And one of the reasons we wanted to bring this breed to you was that you would actually see that they refer to him as like a lamb. Yes. Right? And look at the side, you can see the side of his face, you can actually see the hair um, from the forehead. Yes, top knot. Yeah. Yes. Was it hard to find someone that could breed or that could cut this dog? It was very hard. Um, first, I looked at um, Bedlington rescue groups because I wanted to try for a rescue dog. Mm -hmm. And I looked for over a year and couldn't find one. So I found a breeder in New Jersey um, whose mother started breeding in 1950. Wow. And she's carried on with the Merwin Noble Kennel. So he's from the Merwin Noble Kennel. In Virginia. 
Same, in, in New Jersey. Jersey. New Jersey. Same place. So he comes from a long line of champions. Well, she didn't. Yes, he yes. does. Um, she didn't want to sell him to me because she said he's a terrier and he's stubborn. <laughs> yes, he is. And we love him anyway. <laughs> and she didn't think he'd make a very good therapy dog. He makes a wonderful therapy But I was dog. persistent. Yeah. Yes. 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 So nine months later, she let me take a puppy. Wow. Absolutely. Okay, well, now that we've digressed a little bit, let's go back to where okay. we're supposed to be. So the very, what are the colors they come in? Well, um, Bailey is a blue. He's called blue. There's also a sandy, a, um, there's a, let's see, a blue and a tan. And it says here there's a liver. So I would, that would brownish. be like a brownish red. Yeah. Okay. All right, and a, and a sandy and a tan together, and a liver and a tan together. So there are bicolors that they come in also. There are. But I think with the bicolors, they have spots of colors in specific areas right. on their body. We talked about that in the previous breed with the Cavalier King Charles, where the coloring had to be in specific sure areas in order for them to be um, confirmation worthy, in order for them to be in the show ring, um, to be able to um, achieve their championship. Um, titles. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so we know that they were, they were bred. Um, terriers are mighty hunters, um, and we know that they were, they were bred to be ratters um, in the coal mines, and that's, that was primarily their use to, right. to be able to do that. All right, um, so he doesn't shed. I'm so jealous. So am I. I'm so, so <laughs> jealous. Um, I wouldn't give he up. He doesn't drool. He doesn't. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm twice as jealous Me too, because I don't want a drooling dog. Somewhat. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have to run my vacuum cleaner twice a day some days. But, but in the difference is you must take him to a groomer. Um, I don't know how to groom him. Yeah. Uh, owners can groom the dogs themselves, but I don't know how to do it. But he gets very shaggy and you have to cut. He has to be clipped. Yes, he yes. gets clipped once a month. Uh huh. Oh, really? And when he doesn't get clipped, his top knot sort of goes into dreadlock. His poof. Right. His poof. Yeah. Your poof. So I have always told Lynn at Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> I I want to dye this bright green and put him in a leather Harley vest and let him be a biker. For, <laughs> You're into yes, that stuff. I, of I just dogs yes, yeah, I, she does that with mine too. I just want um, all right, so they also have been labeled pretty high energy. They are athletic. They're very, um, yeah. He has to have a, a walk uh, up to about 40 minutes a day, they say. Okay. We usually walk two miles a day. Okay. Um, and he likes to chase little animals. Yes, he does. Okay. Chippy's driving crazy. Mm -hmm. um, he has to control himself around birds. <laughs> so... So he would not be a great candidate to be free reigning. No, he should be in a fenced in yard. And I don't have a fenced in yard, so we come to the bark park a lot. There, so see that? that can, see, the bark park was built it. just for you. That's why we did it. Just for Bailey. Just, just for Bailey. Just for Bailey. Can he jump over a fence? I don't, we've never seen it here, but I wonder if he. Are they known for jumping? I don't think no, they are. I don't think they so. Okay. No, 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 I don't think Yeah, I don't think so either. No, we know that they're not made for down, right, Bailey? But yes, I thought so. We, we alter our games class for Bailey. When we say down for everybody else, Bailey gets to sit. Because Terriers don't like to down. He just doesn't like to down. He, but he, do you. he really <laughs> likes what right. happens. So, okay, so we've talked about his temperament, which is very, very nice. And we've, we've talked about the standard of height and weight. Let's talk um, a little bit about the health issues that... Um, Bedlingtons um, can have. So, um, well, Bedlingtons are known for um, copper toxosis. Uh -huh, I saw that. Copper and, toxosis. Mm -hmm. and, it's uh, a liver disease. Oh, okay. Where they retain copper and it causes um, problems for other organs. So, there's a DNA test for that. Mm -hmm. And anyone who would ever buy a Bedlington should make sure they had a DNA test for the copper toxosis before they bought them. Also, um, they are known to have cataracts. Mm -hmm. um, I found this one. I had to take notes because I, I don't know the health things of all other breeds. So I, I found this one, thrombopathia, which is a platelet, dis a platelet, 
a platelet disorder. I didn't know that. One. I found this one, and I found my information on the AKC website. Um, anybody can go there if you're looking for a specific breed and um, look up your breed. It gives you all of this information. Um, they they do say too that Bedlingtons have hip dysplasia, mm -hmm. um, but you know. A lot of dogs have a lot of those right. diseases. Right. So um, it's not that every dog gets it. No, it's just, it's just they, they can be prone for. for. Right. Um, and von Willebrand's disease, which is um, a bleeding disorder where the platelets aren't um, doing their job the way they're supposed to. So, or no, the platelet disease is the thrombopathia. The the von Willebrand's is a bleeding disease. So those are some things that um, you need to be aware of. So. Um, one, one other thing that it really isn't a disease, but as with um, all dogs whose ears hang, hang over, down, mm -hmm. uh, you have to watch out for ear infections. infections. Yes. So his ears have to be cleaned at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. And we use a steroid um, ointment um, in his ears as a prophylactic measure to try to cut down on, right. on the uh, infections. Right. Um, so Lynn really did her research on Bailey before she purchased him. She went to a very good reputable breeder and got him and that breeder did those health screenings. Um, mm -hmm. So again, when you're looking for a breed, research their um, health issues and again, make sure that the person that you're buying a purebred dog off of does those health clearances and they need to be done by um, the certified veterinarians that do them and you need to have those certificates saying that they were done. Right. Um, and one of the things Lynn said was the need to walk baby. Yes. Well, if you're someone who doesn't like to walk yourself and doesn't have any place to walk, then you don't want this breed no. because they have to walk. They've got to get they exercise. exercise. Right. So it's not only the breed and the health issues and stuff like that, it's the upkeep of knowing that this dog requires a lot of energy, right. a lot of walking and right. stuff like that. Right. He's high energy, yes. One of our biggest complaints, and Rob and I talk about all this time, we talk about here at the Bark Park, <clears throat> is people that come in with a breed, no way in a million years they should have gotten that breed. They never researched it, they never knew what the requirements were, right. the breeding and everything else, and now they have a dog that they think is really darling, the cutest dog on the face of the earth, but it's not the perfect dog or the best dog for that person. So that's what we want you to learn more than anything else while we do all these programs in the coming weeks and months is what exactly does a particular breed require of you as the owner if you're going to get that breed. Yep. One of the main reasons dogs end up in shelters is because of a high energy level. Mm -hmm. If your dog has a really, really high energy level and you are not meeting that need, they will become a destructive dog. They will become a problem and that's why they end up in the shelters. I need to ask you something else. I'm standing here. What about the tail? The tail's so different. Yes, and we didn't the tail talk is about different. that. He, he has like a, a whippet tail. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Come on. Up. I don't have a cookie. Oh, uh, I don't have one. I didn't bring them. Well, we might stand. There, there we go. There we go. Okay. And show the tail. Oh, stand. Come on. You can do it. And his tail go. does get cut back here to keep it looking like the whippet tail. Oh, otherwise it, it would get, get otherwise it would get longer fur on it too. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I didn't realize said, that. Oh don't touch my tail oh, for everybody. Baby, we're so sorry. See, I'm embarrassed. Hey, let's talk about baby as a therapy dog. Because um, in therapy work, the dog's identified, the owner's identified as wanting to do it, and baby yeah. started coming yeah. for testing and I said, I don't know if this is ever gonna work because of the barking issues and stuff like that. We have since worked through all those things You've been a therapy person, what, two years now? Yes. And he does very well. Yes. And it was, it, there were times, and I'm a tester, as Robin is, for the Alliance of Therapy Dogs, and I said, wow, I don't know about this one. He put me to shame because I was wrong, and he's good. And he was good with the kids because we take him to Cambridge Springs. Yes. Elementary. Uh, yes, the and first graders, the kindergartners. We also go to the uh, high school. Right. Mm -hmm. And the children read to him. We go to Westbury. And let's see, well, uh, you, do, uh, you do Grace? Yes. Sometimes Grace and some other places. So Bailey has really put me, I was way off base on this, but he's become a very good therapy dog. Lynn, anything else you want to add about him? Uh, he's a, only that he's a very sweet dog. He's very gentle. Um, what, what but he's he, a handful. He is a, he's a terrier. 
that comes with the territory. Yep. That comes with the territory. If you look up terrier, it goes for terror er <laughs> ist some days. Hey, um, so Sit. what is Bailey's favorite thing to do? Walk. Mm -hmm. He likes to um, walk on the grass. He loves to walk in the winter. He loves to go through the snow. And if I have him on a flexi leash, say it's uh, 20 feet long, he'll jump in snow drifts. <laughs> and then you have he to really find the belly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and stand over here and turn him towards the camera one more time. The, the interesting thing is his face. Yeah. The face is just the whole thing. There you go. And we need to get a good close up of that because the face is so different than something that you just don't see. There we go. Robert, can you call? Hi, Bailey. There you go. There you are. You tell, boy yes, you are. good. Because I wanted to make sure that everybody saw what we talk about here with the lamb and things like that. Lynn, thank you very, very much. We appreciate thank Bailey you. you coming. And if anybody has any questions about a Bedlington Terrier, you can contact the Bart Park and we will immediately tell you to contact <laughs> Lynn Collin and she will give you some information and you can maybe even come out at some point and meet Bailey because he's here quite a bit. Yeah, he is. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Starting now with our third dog today, and this is Wyeth, and his owner is Ruth Press. And Wyeth is one of our older senior dogs. He is how old? He'll be 10 in August. He's going to be 10 in August. So we're going to have Ruth tell you all about Wyeth and what he does and his claims to fame and all those things. So, and also with me again is Robin Peterson, who's been through the first two and will probably be doing several more of these with me. And uh, she, of course, owns Red Ball Dog Academy. I encourage everyone to take their dogs there. She's located in Conneaut Lake. And if you want a good trainer of dogs, you go to Red Ball Dog Academy. He's so, Robin? Of, he's one of our students. Yes, really? yeah. Uh-oh, now we've got somebody that can say, I am a first student of Red Ball Dog Academy. He's, okay. a, he's a games class boy. OK, Robin, it's all yours. All right. OK, Ruth. So, I, Wyeth. So tell us a little bit um, about Wyeth. He, um, he's a St. Bernard, right? <laughs> right, he's a Labrador Retriever and he's an English Lab, which means that he's kind of short and stocky. And we'll talk more about the differences. There's a get... big difference. Yes, yes, there is. There's a big difference, okay? So according to AKC, um, Labrador Retrievers are the most popular breed uh, of, out of 100 and 94 different breeds and they have been since 1991 they have been the most popular breed and they never win so, the westminster and they never that's okay <laughs> isn't that's that okay. amazing but that's really okay that's for, probably good it is probably good for, right. for those of us that have heart breeds mm -hmm. um, we never want are you going to lay down oh boy you can we never want our dogs to win westminster <laughs> because then what happens is people come out of the woodwork to breed them and they're not always the best breeders, and then we have bad representations of our breeds out there. So um, I'm not sad that a golden doesn't win <laughs> Westminster. Or a collie so, doesn't win. Or a collie right, doesn't that's win. That's right, so, because we've got to keep those protected. So, all right, so tell us, um, tell us a little bit about the breed standard for um, a Labrador Retriever. Oh, well, according to AKC, they're a medium-sized dog with a large head. And they have a short, dense, weather-resistant coat. They, so they're dual-coated. They are. They have a double mm -hmm. coat, and they shed like crazy, especially yes. when it's hot like this. They have a, a short, kind of otter-like tail. Yes. Um, it could be registered as a lethal weapon, too. <laughs> right. Yes. Clean-cut head, broad back and broad skull, powerful jaws, kind eyes, good temperament, and they're wow. smart, they're smart puppies. They are very smart puppies. Um, one thing about a lab, they're very, very popular, but they're very energetic as young dogs. <laughs> they, they're really energetic as young dogs. Right. Right. Um, so they require a lot of time. Right. And then the more you, that you spend time training them and working with them when they're young, the nicer dog you're going to have their whole life. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're not, they would not be a good dog to, um, keep created for no. for hours and hours and hours. No. We're going to pause for a minute. Ruth, can you turn him because I think everybody's seeing his back. Let's see if we can get him turned. Do you need to change places with me or? Because it'll help a little bit. I want everybody to see how there, down. he is. There we go. 
though. He's going to look. He's going to lay, lay on that side. Well, maybe our cameraman can do something about that. Well, Who knows? maybe in a minute we can stand him up and move okay. around yeah. a little okay. too. Okay, so we need to talk about weight when yes. we talk about ladders. Yes, <laughs> we do. Um, so, what is the desired height of um, a lab? according to their standard a male would be 22 to 24 inches okay a, a female 21 to 23 22 uh, he's 23 and okay. as i said he's an english lab we'll talk about the difference um, and a male should weigh somewhere between 65 and 80 pounds mm -hmm. where a female should be 55 to 70. Okay. now is that on this particular type of a that's the okay. AKC stand for a for a Labrador too. Okay, but now what yeah. about some of these ones that we see all the time yeah. that are the black labs and that that are so big? Is that because of the breeding? They should be smaller. It is, but the American labs are taller. Standard. American lab are taller than the English lab. Right. You can see he's boxier. Come here. And here, come here. He says, "I'm heavy. Oh, I'm going to give you my paw." Stand. Stand. There you go. There you go. One of the things you look for for weight is their tuck mm -hmm. and their waist. Yes. And as Robin said earlier, their ribs. Right. Now, Labradors, retrievers in general, and I don't know that everyone knows this, they carry an extra layer of fat um, on them that keeps them insulated to be able to swim in the water. Right, because they go in when the ice goes off mm -hmm. in the spring. Right. <laughs> so it is it. extremely, as an owner of retrievers, there you go. It's extremely difficult to um, keep them in a good weight range. It is really, really easy for them to get overweight quickly. Yes. Um, so for, I know with Goldens, it is, they're such born child hounds to begin with, and labs are quite similar. It is an eighth of a cup difference sometimes mm -hmm. between being too heavy and too thin. Right. And it's the same with labs. Right. Same, you, can, yes. you can never free feed. You know? Oh, no. no. We feed twice a day. He gets three-fourths of a cup twice a day. Mm -hmm. Time out. Difference, trainer. What's the difference between grazing and feeding a dog at spe specific times? Free because she brought that up, so we better explain that okay. to everyone. Okay. So I'm just going to go back over here. Um, so free feeding is when um, you have a bowl of food on the floor and you just keep it full. And the dog can come and eat whenever it feels like it. And um, sometimes called grazing too. Grazing, free okay. feeding, yes. Um, as opposed to when you measure your dog's food, put it down, give them 20 minutes to eat it, and take it away. Um, or three seconds. Or three seconds in <laughs> cases right. of goldens and laps are thank you and I'm done and that's it. Um, the challenges when you graze or free feed is a couple things. Number one, you either get a dog that is overweight because they eat too much, or you get, you breed a, you get a dog who becomes horribly finicky and picky. Um, excuse me, I had a couple bites of that, but it's been out in the air too long now. Oh, I can't eat it. And you must throw it away and fill my, my bowl again. Or the other um, issue that can happen or danger in that is when a dog becomes sick, one of the first signs that your dog is ill is the fact that they stop eating or they don't eat as much. Mm -hmm. Their yep. appetite changes. And when you free feed, you're not apt to notice that as quickly mm -hmm. because the bowl is full or almost always full. And you, a whole day could pass before you realize the dog hasn't eaten right. um, their amount that they usually eat. Yep. And it goes the same for water too. You should know about how much water a day your dog or dogs, and it's it's a lot more difficult when you have multiple dogs with water, but you should know about how much water you go through a day. Adjust for hot conditions or whatever, but if your water bowl is not going down the way it usually does, um, it's either going down too fast or too slow, someone in your house has an issue. Same with their food. If you put their food down in front of them and they walk away, you've got a problem, and it's better to know it sooner than later. Thank you, so. because that's something we were talking about, and mm -hmm. certainly people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. well, we talked about the AKC standard, and a lab is not a lab. There is a difference between an English lab and an American lab. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't realize that there is a difference. There's a difference in the way they look and also in their energy level and their temperament. And so he is an English lab, and that means that he is heavier, blockier. He's got a big, wide chest. 
He's got big, thick trunk legs. He's got a broader head, a shorter muzzle, and his little short otter tail. Um, the American Lab is mostly bred for hunting and for field trials. They have a slimmer body, they're taller, longer legged, longer body, longer tail, and it's not as thick as an otter tail. And they have a, a, a longer face. They just look, look more athletic, and they have a lot more energy. And really, basically, if you want a dog that's going to sit by the fireplace with you, and you're not going to really want to get it out and work it as much, they still need exercise, but they don't need the exercise that an American that lab needs. So the field trial labs, um, they're smart, and they're very energetic, and they need a lot of exercise, but they also need a handler that can deal with them. What about color? Because his color is very interesting. He's what's called a fox red lab, and that is not one of the AKC standard colors. They're, the AKC recognizes black, yellow, and chocolate. And so he would be considered a variation of yellow. Okay. And they can go from almost white to this dark, and it's called fox red. There's a lot more people that are breeding this color, but it's not recognized by the AKC, but it is pretty. It is pretty. And if you want it just for a pet, yeah, who yeah. really cares? And they actually do show these as yellows, um, so there are they are in the show ring somewhat, but not not in probably the big shows. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the people that are breeding dogs for show are breeding this style mm -hmm. more so than the tall ones. Right. So the right. tall ones are probably never going to get a confirmation. Show. Right. When you go to um, when you go to. <coughs> Uh, a dog show, you see the compact labs. Mm -hmm. They're they're low to the ground. And they're built strong, and, right. and um, that's usually what you see. And they are strong. Yeah. They when are strong. when you take off after something, you should probably not hang on to the leash like my husband did. <laughs> yeah. When Wyeth took him completely off his feet and broke his collarbone. Oh, oh wow. my! <laughs> so life expectancy, twelve to fifteen years if you're lucky. Well, I like that. I How like, many bags did you have? I like those. Well, uh, we have had 11 dogs, and only two of them were not labs. Okay. <laughs> when I first met Ruth, she had two chocolate labs that, that were her puppies. Okay. They, had, they had bred them. That's when we, and that was many, many years ago. Um, um, okay, so, oh my goodness, you just complained. So, dual coated, dual coated means that we shed a lot. A lot. Um, all year round? Yes. Um, but worse in the summer. And fall, mm -hmm. so a lot like a golden, mm -hmm. um, but shorter hair. What about their feet? Grooming. Do they have web feet? Yes, they do have web feet, and they're good swimmers. He loves the water. We have a pond behind our house that belongs to our neighbor, and they're in there almost every day in the summer. So all labs have web feet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, grooming. What is required? for grooming on a lab. They're kind of wash and wear dogs. I don't yeah. like you anymore. <laughs> 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 talk, let's not talk We're to her anymore. To her okay, anymore. good. Wash and wear we got dogs. that done. <laughs> you, you can give them baths. We, these guys probably get a bath about every once a month, but mm -hmm. um, they, need, they need brushing more than they get. Um, but they're really not difficult to maintain as far as, not like the golden. <laughs> well, goldens really don't require a lot of um, grooming per se as like Bailey the Bedlington right. would be. There's not clipping or whatever, but bathing is not difficult. It's the drying. Mm. It's the drying <laughs> the golden that takes the time. It's not mm. the rest of it. Um, it's the drying when you guys dock dive or um, go swimming, it doesn't take you as long to dry as right. it does us. Although so, he dries slower because of that undercoat yeah, right. than like McQueen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, ears is something that you need to be concerned about because mm -hmm. especially if they swim a lot, they do tend to get some ear infections. So you let's, need to dry them out. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Let's talk about the health issues of a lab. What are some of the health issues? Um, a lot of hip dysplasia, elbow problems. Well, that's, those are things that you should ask your brooder if they've done clearances on their elbows and their hips. Um, well, wait a minute, didn't you have health issues? What was, uh, wasn't he hurt? And he, had, had, he had a ruptured disc in his back. Oh, is, that, is that common? 
I don't think it's too. No, I don't, I don't think so. I, it's not. <coughs> it's not one of the things that you would um, clear for or look for. It was an injury. Right. So I remember seeing that because they right. shaved his, uh, his yeah, back and all. Yeah. That. See his back. He's got like a streak. That right. Oh, I do see that. So when you when you clip a dog, like if somebody says my dog is going to be hot this summer, so I'm going to take all its fur off, it doesn't come back the same way. Right. See how that stripe is coming. Yeah, out. that's right here. And yeah, you, center. You should never shave a dual coated <coughs> dog. Never. You should never mm -hmm. shave a dual coated dog. Um, they have that undercoat. <coughs> it's a downy undercoat, and they have a coarser coat on top. It's water repellent. Um, it helps them go through the water. It helps them dry quicker. But that downy undercoat that's on there raises that hair up and it helps the air flow through and keep their skin cool. When you shave that off, you make them hotter. It's an insulation. Yes. It's the only way they can really sweat through panting in their feet. Right, right. So to shave a dual coated dog, you're actually harming them. You're not, you're not helping them be cooler. Um, so, so some of the things that my breed and your breed have in common retrievers, um, hip dysplasia, um, elbow dysplasia, eyes, mm -hmm. um, and heart. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I found that was different was um, hereditary myopathy was listed on the AKC site, which is a muscle weakness mm -hmm. that they can get. The other thing that I saw was called um, EIC, um, exercise-induced collapse. We've had a couple, of, uh, I volunteer with a program that raises a lot of labs. And we've had several dogs released from the program because of that. It's a, a thing where if they're exercising too much, they just kind of keel over. They just lose stability. And they can do a DNA test for that. Mm -hmm. So that if you were looking to um, buy a lab from a breeder, you would want to make sure that that was done so that you don't that you don't incur that. And that was noticed um, in young, young puppies, mm -hmm. like you just said, because right. your puppies would be young from right. your... Um, your program that right. you're that you're with. Let's take a break. What is that yes. program? Yes. Let's, we have to talk about I, that. That's so well, important. I volunteer with Canine Partners for Life, which is an organization that raises and trains and places service dogs with people that have different types of disabilities. And we don't work with blind people unless they have a multiple disability, but we place a lot of dogs that people use for support so that they can walk without falling. People that have Parkinson's stroke. Um, MS, different epilepsy. Epile we, well, we get to that. Um, we also placed a lot of medical alert dogs. The, the first ones that we started with were seizure alert dogs for people that have epilepsy or another seizure disorder. And those dogs can let their person know 15 to 40 minutes ahead of a seizure so that they can get to a safe private place. And also all the dogs that are with Canine Partners for Life are labs. Right. We actually, the program breeds labs for their program. Mm -hmm. And so they are, they're, right now, they're, they're looking for dogs that are taller than the standard. So they're breeding big for support mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the people that need to actually lean on the dog physically for support. Um, we also place medical alert dogs for people that have cardiac conditions where their blood pressure drops quickly and they pass out with no warning. The dogs can tell them ahead of time they need to stop and sit down. We did a program on that uh, mm -hmm. one time for Armstrong and I don't know whether or not that's one of the ones on the YouTube, but if not maybe we can get it put back on again because it was a program where we had that right. one dog and Tara we did McKinney. that entire mm -hmm. uh, program. So back to Wyeth, anything else we need to know about Wyeth? What are things that Wyeth likes? Look at him wag his tail. What are things that Wyeth likes to do? Eat. Eat. What, well, he, yes. what else does he like? He likes to, to swim. He likes to go for walks. Well, look he at likes to go for rides in the car. Oh, Mia, yes. And he dog dives. He walks. When, when we drive here to the bark park, he knows when we turn off of, off of the road that turns up this way. Mm -hmm. And when we start into this driveway, he starts. <laughs> Because <laughs> he thinks he's going swimming. Swimming. And he, and he has been dog diving for quite a while now. He has been, yeah. He After a, he injured his back, right. he had to have a break. But he's, he, was, he was in Saturday again. Was he? Good we boy. just don't let him go as long. Yes. Right. Yes. Him to get and as he's, tired. he <laughs> dog dives, so um, that was a sport that he did. Um, but he's also one of our therapy dogs. He is. Correct. Yeah, so he's also one of our therapy dogs and goes, what is his favorite venue of the therapy dogs? Does he like doing the kids? Does he like 
the nursing homes. What's his favorite the libraries. place to go? The I think he likes the I think he likes the children at the libraries best. He but likes he does, the stories. He does well at the um, at the transitional care at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go to um, Sagertown, Cribs, Westbury, Juniper Village, transitional care, and now we go to the high school uh, at Cambridge Springs and work with the special needs kids there. Good job. Good job. So if anybody was thinking about getting a lab, what was the three most important things about them? I'd check the parents. I'd, I'd, I'd want to meet the parents. Mm -hmm. Temperament. I'd want to know what their temperament is like and what their health is like. Um, I'd want one that's calm. <laughs> it's calm, like why? It's calm, yeah. They're, they're so much easier to live with than the ones that are really high strung. Mm -hmm. If you remember Micah. Yes. You remember Micah? He was a big black lab who was more like an English, or like an uh, American breed. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the vets, when, when he was small, we had the two chocolate labs mm -hmm. who were more like this. And then we had Micah, oh. and Walt was talking to the vet about him having such high respiration. And the vet says, well, let me tell you, you're used to Dodge trucks, and this is a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was Quite a difference. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much. I appreciate you bringing in Wyeth, and everybody had a chance to meet one of our senior therapy dogs, and one that's very active in a lot of different things, including dog diving and loves to swim. Robin, thank you for helping us with today's program. Ruth, again, Ruth Prest is the owner of Wyeth. We appreciate you bringing Wyeth in and telling us also about Canine Partners for Life. And Robin, anything you want to add? Well, I'm just, if you're, um, again, we can't say it enough, if you're out there looking for a dog, do your research. Do your research, um, take your time and do it. All puppies are cute. There's no such thing as just looking for a puppy. If you go and look at a puppy, you're going to take it home. Um, so make sure you do your research first. If it's a mixed breed, research the breeds that are involved because you're going to live with that for 10 to 12 years. Make sure that there's nothing about those breeds that you could not live with. Um, that's how puppies end up in shelters and we try to prevent that. So okay. do your research. Thank you very much, appreciate it. And we will be back again with some more breeds to help educate the public on the different breeds and what you should be looking for. Thank you.